Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. Anime Studio Pro 10 has seen the introduction of some brand new bone constraints. So with the combination of these constraints, you can do some really unique effects all within Anime Studio. So first, let's take a look at what is called independent angle. As you can see here, I have what appears to be a crane of sorts on screen, just to kind of demonstrate this. If I take the Manipulate Bones tool, and then come over here, and I move this around, you can see that nothing is really new here. It moves like you would think it would move. Especially make note, that the last bone here in the front moves along with its parent. So let's see what independent angle can do for us now. We can take the select bone tool, click on that front bone, come over here to bone constraints, and choose independent angle. You'll notice that there's a few new options here. So we'll choose independent angle as the first option to play with here, and then close. So now, taking the Manipulate Bones tool again, we can move this around, and you can see now that the child bone, or the front bone here, is maintaining its angle. No matter what we do with the parent, the child is going to continue to face forward. So in a way, it kind of acts like a camera crane. And this can be useful in many different situations. So as an example, let's pull up here a leg. So we have our leg on screen. Now traditionally, if you move the leg around, you're going to have the foot follow it. So that's nothing new. But if we take the select bone tool, click on that bone, go into bone constraints, click independent angle, and close it, now we move this around, you can see we have a much different effect going on here. So if you have the leg moving up, you may not always want it to move just how the leg moves. So what you could do then is you can make your own corrections to the foot itself by taking your Manipulate Bones tool here and let's come out here. We can just add some animation here to about right here. And you could come in here then, and even though your angle is independent of that of the parent bones, you can still make your own corrections. So you could come in here and slightly move it up if you wanted to while the leg is moving up, as an example. And then when it comes back down, you know, you could then make your own little correction like that. So in this case, independent angles could be especially useful when you are doing leg movements or other types of limb movements when you want to constrain a certain child and then do some manual corrections later on. One useful feature with bones in Anime Studio has always been the ability to scale bones. In this example here, you can see I have an arm image in a bone layer, and with my transform bone tool, if I click here on the bottom point, the scale point, and I click and drag, you can see here that I can scale the bone. And that, again, has been something you could do for quite a while, and it's really useful. Well now, with the new angle constraints, we can do some other stuff here when it comes to scaling. So we will select this bone with the Select Bone tool, and then come up here to Bone Constraints, and you'll see here we have Squash and Stretch Scaling. So we can check that, and then hit Close. So now, if we come in here with the Transform Bone tool, and we move this around, you can see that it's creating a Squash and Stretch effect. As we come back, you know it vertically gets bigger, as we go forward, it seems to thin out as it's stretching. So you can create some really cartoony looking effects with this new constraint. 
And you can also adjust some of its properties as well. Like for instance, if we increase this number or decrease it, let's say 0.5 and hit close, you can see now it adjusts how much it squash and stretches. It basically allows you to configure just how much that effect takes place. So if you're finding it to be too much, you can go into that field and reduce the number and you'll still get the effect just to a lesser degree. One of the biggest strengths with Anime Studio is the ability to create bone rigs for your characters. Now, when we used something called bone strengths in order to manipulate our bones, we would sometimes get this effect. I just have the manipulate bones tool and I'm moving here my arm and you can see while this works, we have sort of a issue going on here where it bows inward, where it creates this dip in the bend of the arm, which may not be desirable. So with the introduction of Anime Studio 9, there were smart bones, which you could then go in and create motions and then use your points to correct the bends, basically, so that whenever a character moved that way, the correction would take place. And while that works good, there are some limitations to it, especially if you're using an image like we are right here. You'll see on my layers panel, I have an ARM PNG file that is being controlled by the bone. So we can't actually go in and modify the points. Not to mention smart bones can sometimes be a little bit time consuming. So now there is a new option that allows us to really streamline this process. First, you need to be on the vector or image layer that you want to alter here. In this case, we are on the arm.png file within the bone layer. Now, we'll take the select bone tool and highlight these two bones because these are the two bones that are affecting the bend. Now, you can only use two bones for this and the bones must be in a straight line in order for this to work. So now, once you've done that, you can go up to Bone and then Create Smooth Joint for Bone Pair. Now, if we take the Manipulate Bone tool and move this around, you can see that we no longer have that pinching effect going on. Now you can see we have something going on here, but that's actually just what's occurring in the canvas. If we render this out, you can see that it's actually a smooth elbow transition here. It's just a nice bend. And this can definitely save you a lot of time now. You don't have to worry about points not working or bends acting weird when you bend your arms because now with that option and two bones, you can have Anime Studio create these nice bends. Now additionally, you can do a little bit more with this if you wanted to. As an example, I could just take this image here and offset it a little bit. Let's go like this. Now we can take those bones and move it. You can see when I do this, now we're getting a much more stretchy, cartoony bend going on here. So you could really do a lot with this. You can have them extend out more when they bend, and it just depends on how you offset this. You could really do some pretty uh, drastic results with this. So once again, do the bend, and you can see it's like really like stretching now. So this is definitely a welcome addition to Anime Studio, and I think a lot of users out there are going to find a huge benefit to setting up your character rigs with now being able to set this option up for joints. Bone targeting is a great new feature that acts similar to locking bones, except now we have more control over what's occurring. So right now on the screen I have a bone rig and if I take the transform bone tool you know I can do what you would expect with this rig. As an example I can move him around you know I can rotate the legs and all that sort of stuff. So that's nothing new. So what would targeting then do for us? Well first what we need to do 
is create some target bones. So with that bone layer selected, and make sure that we're on frame zero, we'll come up here to the add bone tool, and we can hit enter or return to deselect any bone. We don't want these target bones connected to any bone on the rig. So we can come down here and you can see we have some bones here for the feet. So let's draw out a bone like this, hit enter, and then draw out a bone like that. So we also want to make note of what these bone names are. You can see here we have B23 and we have B22. We can even rename these if we want for the sake of simplicity. We could name this target one and then target two. Okay, so now the next step is you want to click on the bones that you want to target these targets to, these target bones to. So in this case, we will click on the left leg here and then come up here to bone constraints and you'll see we have a target drop down menu. Choose that and then choose your target. In this case, target one. You can see now a dot appears between these two points of the bones. Okay, good. We can close that. Click on the second leg bone here. Bone constraints, target, target two. Close this. So now what we have going on here, and this is pretty cool, is let's go to frame one and then take the transform bone tool. We can come in here with like the main bone and we can move the body around. And you'll see as we move the body, the targets basically anchor or lock in the bones. So we could do some pretty different things here when it comes to just how we can move these things around. Now, if you move up too far, you're going to detach your targets, but you'll see here that the legs still are basically attracted to those targets. It's almost like a magnet. You can kind of see how it's going on here. So we can bring those back down here and reattach those. So there's many things, of course, we could do here in terms of how this would work. But let's say, for instance, as you can see when we move this, you know, the feet rotate with it. Well, what if we want the feet to stay in place? Aha, that's where independent angles come in. So we can take the select bone tool. Let's go back to frame zero here. And we can select these feet here, these bones, and just click on independent angle for each of those. So now, pop back here to frame one. We will grab the transform bone tool. You can see here now that when I do all this, that the, uh, the legs stay put. Of course, unless if you start to go too far and then it detaches. But for the most part here, you can get this look here that the feet are anchored into the ground. And that's really cool. The other thing you can do too is if you come down here to the target bone, you can move the targets and move the legs along with them. So as you can imagine, this can make working with walk cycles easier and make them more robust because you can now basically have more control over how these legs look, especially with the independent angles and just how the targets affect the bones. So that is also really cool. Now, when you're using targets, and I believe I showed this before, when you're, for instance, on frame one and you take the transform bone tool and you translate up here, you know, we get this effect where it's like a magnet and we have the character detached from the targets, but you know, it's still pointing to the targets, your legs. So there's something else we can do with this that's actually pretty cool. First, if we take the select bone tool and we select all the bones that are affecting the legs, we can go up here to bone constraints and then there is something called maximum IK stretching. And you can see here, it's currently set to one. Well, that's the default. And when it's set to one, it's not going to do anything. Now you could jack this number up as high as you want, but let's just try two. 
and then close. Now, if I select that main bone again and then take my transform bone tool here and I move up, you can see now that the legs stretch upward as opposed to detaching from the targets. Now there will be a point here where they will. If you keep going and going and going, you can see now they eventually detach and that will depend on your number. Again, if you have a really high number, you could probably stretch forever and ever and ever if you wanted to. So it really depends on what you want to do with your character. And the same here applies now for the targets. If we click on one of these targets and move it, you can see now we can do a stretch effect like this. Now, you might be wondering, well, why would you want to do something like this? Well, it really adds a real cartoony look to it. So if you're looking for that bouncy cartoony look, this can really help achieve those results. So to conclude here, all of these features can be combined into one cycle of animation, into one character, and so forth. As I hit play, you can see here we have a walk cycle, and it's using all of these features. We have the elbow bends occurring with the arms, we have the independent angles with the feet, we have some squashing and stretching going on, and basically, it's really easy to combine all of these different features to create just a simple walk cycle. But don't think it's just limited to the walk cycle. There are many things you can do with this, and I'm sure as everyone starts to get their hands on Anime Studio version 10, we're going to see some really amazing results. If you'd like more information on Anime Studio, you can visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.